Hi, I'm Allie. I'm a crunchy mama and a health coach who focuses on pregnancy. So if you want weekly tips, please subscribe to my channel, Paleo Preggers. Today, I'm going to talk about ultrasounds throughout pregnancy. I'm going to talk about some of the risks and some of the benefits and my personal experience and opinions with them, as well as different ways that you can get some of the benefits and minimize the risk. So ever since about 16 weeks, I've been dealing with a lot of ultrasound drama. I personally did not want to get any ultrasounds, um, although I was forced to get a dating ultrasound early in my pregnancy, but my husband really wanted to make sure everything was perfect, especially since I'm planning on doing a home birth this time around, which is understandable. I probably just have a lot more faith in my body and the baby than he does, but I will talk about more about what I did in a bit. There are certainly benefits to getting ultrasounds. You get peace of mind that everything with the baby is okay. You find out the gender if you want. You can ensure the placenta is not in the way, which is obviously really important. It can help determine a due date if that's questionable. Um, you can make sure it's not an ectopic pregnancy if you're having symptoms. That would probably be a great use of ultrasounds. There are tons of uses and benefits to ultrasounds. Most people think more information is better, but there are some potential risks to getting ultrasounds. My babies have always run away from ultrasounds and Dopplers, and I do think there's a reason for that. And just as a side note, the Doppler used in most offices and sometimes at home to hear the baby's heart rate is just another form of ultrasound. In fact, it actually has higher levels of ultrasound. So if you're wary of ultrasounds, you may want to limit the use of the Doppler. That being said, the amount of time that a Doppler is used compared to, for example, the fetal survey is a much shorter period of time. The midwives that I'm currently uh, using use a fetoscope, and that's a little bit like a stethoscope, but that can be that basically can't detect the heartbeat until about 20 weeks, whereas you'll get a heartbeat on a Doppler at around 12 weeks. So if you're wary of being exposed to ultrasound waves, you could request a fetoscope instead. However, I think most practices don't use fetoscopes at all, with the exception of the more, you know, the birth centers, home births, and the hippies of the world. Personally, I wanted to opt out of the fetal survey for a few reasons. I was confident my baby was developing okay. Um, I had been required to get a dating ultrasound at what turned out to be 11 weeks, and I saw a healthy developing baby. I also had a genetic screening done via blood work and was told I had a 99% chance of everything being good. I also have not had great experience with sonographers who are the ultrasound techs, and this is for both of my miscarriages and all of the ultrasounds I had to get with my son, which I think was three during that pregnancy. Something I will never forget was during the 20-week fetal survey, I was keeping the gender a surprise again, and the woman accidentally dropped a pronoun, which I always had in the back of my head, and I later learned she used the right one, so she accidentally told me the gender. So if you are trying to keep the gender a secret, I would suggest at least telling them, hey, let's just use this pronoun because it can be hard, I guess, for them sometimes to not use it. Um, so besides that, I spent over an hour there because he's always trying to turn away from it and he clearly didn't like what was happening. And then you're there and they're measuring each leg and each arm and every part of the body. Then the tech leaves for a while, only for someone else to come back and do it again for another 15 minutes to double check the whole process. That was at least my experience for almost every ultrasound I've ever had, um, which in my personal opinion is just too many. Um, and I'll say that with the exception of, you know, the early ultrasounds, which are usually only about 15 to 20 minutes. I'm not going to go into all the issues I had with each one, but they were not happy experiences. Now, I'm pretty crunchy, and I don't believe this entire process is necessary or required. We existed for thousands of years without this, so to say this is required to the degree that we do them, at least in America, is a bit far-fetched to me. So let's talk about what the risks are. The American Congress of Obstetricians and Gynecologists state there is no reliable evidence found between ultrasounds and birth defects. However, 
it is possible that effects could be identified in the future. For this reason, it is recommended that ultrasound exams be performed only for medical reasons by qualified health providers. So they're not really saying they're bad, but they do recognize there could be some risk. I also don't think they're looking to stop doing them. Now, in the circles that I hang out in, there is some risk. So first, ultrasound machines generate heat, and they may heat above maximum safe levels, especially when the wand is held in place for longer than two to three seconds. Dopplers have been shown to cause significant heating, especially in a baby's brain. There are a handful of studies that show some risk. So a study from the University of Washington found a higher presence of autism in boys who were exposed to ultrasounds in the first trimester. A study from the UK found women who received two or more Doppler scans to check the placenta had more than two times the risk of perinatal death compared to babies unexposed to Doppler. Other studies from the 90s, when ultrasounds were much weaker, showed increased risk of miscarriage or preterm birth. Studies from China point to ultrasounds increasing risk for autism, ADHD, genetic damage, jaundice, childhood cancers, and allergies. This could be all related to increased body temperature, which are known to have risks. That's why they tell you to not take hot baths. One study found brain hemorrhages in mouse fetuses when they were exposed to ultrasound doses similar to those used on human babies. Another found a 22% reduction in the rate of cell division and twice the rate of cell death in the small intestine when exposed to ultrasound. Even though this is a study on animals, I think this is one of the most important pieces. It is known that ultrasound is capable of deforming cell membranes. And this can happen in both the brain and obviously other tissues. Although the brain is at most risk since it's such a complex organ. And this risk is known amongst practitioners and it's one of the primary reason you really do need an experienced sonographer to use it. There are a few more examples of studies done that show adverse effects. I'll post a link to those um, in the description if you want to read the studies and I'll also link to a Mama Natural blog post that has a lot of this information and a lot more as well as testimonies of what other women have done in terms of ultrasound. An important note though is ultrasounds do not improve outcomes. Studies have been done to show this. In fact, another reason I didn't want to get the survey is because false positives are common, which then leads to even more ultrasounds and a lot more stress on the mom, which isn't good for mom or baby. They also end up increasing the rate of interventions. So if you're trying to avoid this cascade of interventions that's known to happen in hospitals on occasion, um, be aware that ultrasounds can definitely be the start of this. Obviously, this can be either good or bad, depending on what they find. So one thing they often do is give an estimate of the baby's size. And if they think the baby's too big, they're going to push for a C-section. But I do know a girl where they estimated her baby to be 10 pounds and they were pushing for a C-section. She fought them on it and ended up giving birth to a six pound baby. So those are not always that accurate. There are other reasons and risks that they'll make you aware of, some more valid than others, but just try to determine how risky or concerning your personal situation is and look into it yourself and discuss different options with your provider. Obviously, if the placenta is covering your cervix, you will probably want to opt for a C-section. It really depends on what they tell you. Another thing to take into consideration is if you're going to feel better or worse if the baby is found to have any issues. I do know some people who have had false positives only to stress and get emotional for weeks and be so afraid and then in a follow-up be told everything's fine. I'd rather avoid that. Personally, I don't necessarily want to know until my baby is born if it has those kinds of issues, but I know many people do, including my husband. I also think it matters where you'll be giving birth. So if you're going to be giving birth at home, maybe you'll feel a lot better with more information. If you're in a hospital where they have the ability to deal with everything there, if you're able to get away with avoiding ultrasounds, which obviously depends on where you give birth, then you can do that too. Obviously, there are moms out there who were warned of higher risks to the baby and were thrilled to get that information. You have to determine what you're comfortable with and work around what your OB or midwife will allow. 
Some people get ultrasounds to bond with the baby. If that's something you think you need to bond with your baby, then you should do that. Uh, I personally get a better dose of bonding with it by, you know, touching my belly and having it punch me and then I punch it back um, than I do looking at it on the screen and not touching it. Um, and even more so when the baby is out of my body. That's just me. It really depends on what your situation is. Now, when it comes to early pregnancy ultrasounds, I honestly don't understand that at all, especially just to confirm a pregnancy. You can just panic up. Um, I hear of people getting ultrasounds all the time and panicking because they didn't get a heartbeat at six weeks, which doesn't always happen. This actually happened to me with my first pregnancy and based on how that care went, I really wonder if it was the stress and emotions that caused it because I didn't miscarry until about 12 weeks, but those six weeks I was a mess. You don't need to run out and get an ultrasound to prove that you're pregnant. If needed, I'd advise at least waiting until eight or nine weeks for an ultrasound of this type, just so they don't set you off in a panic. Now, when it comes to the 20 week ultrasound, they basically measure all of the body parts to make sure they look normal, that all the organs are there and growing. So they spend a lot of time looking at the brain and the heart to make sure those are developing well. They look at the placenta, but if it's low lying, then a lot of times you might need to get another one later to make sure it's moved out of the way, which it does often do. And they can detect the sex of the baby if that hasn't been determined already. Um, and obviously, if that's something that you want to know. So here was my drama in brief. So I started care with this pregnancy where I last gave birth, which was at a birth center, but that closed now due to COVID. So everyone was going to the hospital and that's not what I wanted. And they do everything by the book, which I wasn't a fan of with the birth of my son. So I was already debating if I wanted to stay with that care. So I asked if I could opt out of the fetal survey and I got a strong no. And that's when I started to look into home birth options and ultimately what I decided to do. So I transferred care around the 20 week mark and canceled my scheduled ultrasound. And while interviewing home birth midwives and then in leaving the practice um, that I was already doing care with, they both mentioned that they would like to see the placenta not in the way and that there were no issues with the heart. So I understood this and I thought it did make sense. So that was my plan. My husband, on the other hand, was not so happy with this. He wanted to make sure everything was perfect, but I had already canceled my survey appointment and still ultimately didn't want to get one and was trying to figure out what to do in the process as far as how to get this scheduled. So what I was trying to do was getting, get something called a limited ultrasound, but my midwives were having trouble finding a place that would actually do just that and not the entire survey. Maybe it's just where I live. I have heard it's definitely possible to get, but that was a problem. So now it's like 28 weeks. My husband is pissed. and I'm scouring the internet, calling other birth centers to see if anyone can get me some kind of limited one. Ultimately, I ended up finding out that you actually get less false positives the longer you wait. So if I got one at 32 weeks, all would be good. And it's also a better time to look at the placenta. My husband was really not thrilled with this because by 32 weeks, if anything is really wrong with the baby, it's not like we're going to terminate the pregnancy. And honestly, I don't think I would have at 20 weeks. And again, this goes back to the question, do you want to know or not? But I was pretty confident in general that everything was looking groovy. So I was fine with it. So in the end, we all agreed, my husband begrudgingly, for me to go in for a biophysical profile at 32 weeks. Now, what they look at in the biophysical profile is the amniotic fluid, the heart, the brain. They look at the baby doing practice breaths. They look at the position of the baby, where the placenta is, and where the insertion of the umbilical cord is. And you kind of get points for each one of these. And this is mostly only for high risk pregnancies or if anything was detected earlier that they want to double check. This is not necessarily a, usually at least a standard or medically necessary ultrasound, but it was actually the easiest thing for us to order and get done without having done the survey. So I just finally did that yesterday at 32 weeks. For me, they actually did do a little bit more than I would have liked. 
because I had never had a full survey done, they said they had to do this additional stuff. Um, they would just it involved them taking more measurements. It, I was just there probably longer than I would have been otherwise. In the end, it took about 30 minutes and ultimately it did put my mind at ease with a few things. So I was mostly concerned about the level of fluid because I didn't think I'd been drinking the amount of water that I should be throughout my pregnancy. Um, and I also did really want to make sure the placenta would not be a problem for the home birth. It also definitely put my husband at ease and my mother because everything was reported to be great. No issues with the heart. The baby still had two legs, two arms, all its organs, etc. Um, and especially with doing a home birth, I do feel better about it. And I know my husband and mom got peace of mind from it. I will say, again, my baby definitely ran away from it a lot and was not super cooperative, but at least we weren't there for an hour trying to get each tiny little measurement. I don't know if I would suggest doing it my way, but it does depend on what you're comfortable with and what you can agree on with your partner and healthcare practitioner and what they do allow you to do. So some of the things that you can do to limit exposure, but also get some of the benefits are see if your provider can use a fetoscope instead of a Doppler. Although, as I mentioned before, not all common practices use that. Um, attempt to forego any ultrasound until the survey um, and try to limit it to only getting that one ultrasound if you want that peace of mind. And especially if you do want to get the full survey, ask if you can wait until the 22nd or 23rd week. And apparently that is when the baby is bigger, so there are less false positives. Ask the tech to be quick and get in and out. I did do this with my first baby though twice and it did not work especially if you're at a teaching hospital or somewhere where they use a lot of students, ask your midwife if it can, if it can be scheduled with someone a little bit more advanced. Sometimes they do that only for high risk pregnancies, but if you ask, you might get lucky and they might allow you to do that. When you have somebody that's more experienced, they will definitely be quicker and you won't have to go through it with a student and then have a second person verify everything. Also, you're less likely to need to come for a follow-up later. Definitely do not get the 3D or 4D ultrasounds. Even the FDA warns against getting these ultrasounds. They only recommend doing these for medical use by a trained professional, and these scans are usually not performed by a registered sonographer. Also, you might be tempted to do this to get a more accurate or a better picture of your baby because you just can't wait. But I see a lot of these um, in the pregnancy forums I'm in and they all look exactly the same. And it looks like a smushed up baby. So save your money and don't do these. Just wait until your baby's born. Lastly, don't purchase a Doppler for home use. You'll be tempted to use it often, and you're just exposing your baby to more continuous ultrasound waves rather than every few weeks that you would get at your doctor's appointment. You are also not trained to use this device. For the same reason not to get the 3D for, or 4D ultrasounds, you want a trained professional doing these in order to not expose your baby to too much heat. So hopefully I've given you some considerations to think about, maybe some questions to ask your doctor, maybe some questions to ask yourself and figure out what your preferences are and see what your options are as far as, you know, what you are or are not allowed to do based on where you're giving birth. As mentioned before, I'm going to post some of the links in the description, which you can find more information about if you want to get more details on any of this, or if you want to look into the individual studies that I talked about. Thanks for watching. If you want to continue to get more crunchy pregnancy, birth, and baby tips, please subscribe to my channel, Paleo Preggers. And if you've chosen to get ultrasounds or forgo them, please let us know your experience in the comments. Have a great day. Bye.